All right, we are back for the final round of our Battle for Zendikar uh, pack per win Swiss draft. I uh, will go ahead and go first. All right. Uh, this hand looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stick with this. Let's see if we're up against another aggressive deck because this hand has the potential to hit pretty hard. Another green deck. The problem with green is you gotta win early. If you don't win early, you're in trouble. And another green-white deck. So we'll uh, attack for five. If our opponent doesn't play a card next turn, then we get a land, we'll do it again. If we don't get a land, we'll uh, develop our board some. Probably play the healer. I think the invoker is definitely a better card late game, so probably want to hang on to it if we can. Okay. I think he probably values that card, um, so I think it's fine to attack into. All right, so unfortunately we did not draw land, so um, I think at this point we don't want to be sinking mana into the... This may be wrong, but um, I don't think I want to be sinking mana into the landfall trigger at this point, and I wouldn't mind getting rid of his his uh, kind of mana guy. Uh, he doesn't want to take that. So I was planning to play the Calastria Healer. I think I still do want to do that, just because I wouldn't mind using Bone Splinters on it. And that leaves us a little bit more versatility uh, further on down the line. Uh, plus we have no other Colonialist creatures in our hand that would make use of the uh, the you know the additional ability where we can ping multiple times per turn. So our opponent now has five mana available. Plays a stalwart. That's fine. I think that's a. That's a good Bone Splinters um, target. Hopefully we draw a land. No land, so yeah, I think um, we're just going to continue. Hey, right, look, I did it right that time. We're just going to continue attacking. I think we saved the sure strike um, to try and finish him off. So I think he'll definitely put a 1 1 on the battlefield. He needs some throwaway creatures. And a blister pod. That's a creature he's definitely not going to be trading, so I think he's totally fine with sending him in. So that's interesting. So now we can uh, use the landfall trigger and attack with just the token. Uh, just the elemental. Or could it? Uh, we need one more mana to attack with both. 
Uh, I assume he'll block with the blister pod. But I feel like we have to keep removing these creatures. Actually, actually you know what? I think I'm probably going to regret this if I don't draw another land. Or, I'm sorry, if I do draw another land. But I'm just going to play the Nettle Drone. And pass the turn. I think this does a lot to keep him back. Um, at this point, the Beast Caller I would be happy to... Would I be happy to trade with? I don't know. I actually don't know if I want to trade with it at all. So no landfall trigger this time, which is nice. Yeah, um, I don't know what he has in mind for us here, but no blocks. We'll take three. I assume it's going to be the, what is it, the green, double green that creates a bunch of tokens. Opponent does nothing. So I'm playing around the um, if you attack or block uh, with a creature, you can, um, you know, put the mana wherever you want to, or put the um, damage wherever you want. That was a four damage. Um, distribute as you like. So he's just making a core um, soldier, which is fine. So it's either take three or, or get rid of it. So that's that's totally fine for me. I wonder if he chooses to use it or not. So a white green is probably a deck that's using a lot of mass pump spells. Um, or at least it would be if I was playing it. So I assume that's what he's doing. And the more he trades off these creatures, the worse they are. This is like the world's worst use of uh, combat tricks. He's essentially emptied his hand to kill a token. And create a 1-1 one, one that, that's going to be a 1-1 one, one again next turn. It's... That's exactly the kind of thing I'd like him to do. See if he continues to get landfall. I mean, he he's got to slow down and be a little bit more um, passive, I would think, just because he knows I I could potentially attack without casting anything else at any point for um, eight, and he's only at ten. Hmm, a ton of ramp in his deck. Well, that's definitely a good card. So I take what? 3, 6, 9 if I don't block? I think you'd have been better off waiting until next turn.
Okay. So I have my fifth mana. I can play a four or five, which stops all of his stuff. Um, or a three two with landfall. He is tapped out. I'm at 14. He can, with no pumps, he's on zero cards. He can attack me for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven next turn. So I could landfall, create a So any other, if he plays any other ally, I just lose if I do that. Do I anyway? So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen damage. So I need to be able to block. Yeah, I think I think I just play the land. I do not use the ability. And I play the night watch. Uh because it can still profitably trade even if he pumps. So what is his one card? Hoping it's not an ally. So I'm one mana short of actually using the invoker. So I guess that determines what I do next turn somewhat. Um, drawing a land gets a lot better for me. But not till the following turn. So I definitely want to get him into play. So this puts me on six. Do I want the elemental? No, I don't think I do. I think I just play the Invoker and keep up the sure strike. Right? I guess if I did that, I should have used the landfall. I don't know. I mean, then the sure strike's not up. Not being able to do both the Hedron Archive and the Velcate Invoker is kind of awkward, though, because now next turn I also can't activate it. And I can't lose it. It's like the card that's keeping me in the game, really. So how long till he draws another ally? <laughs> that's the question. Uh, but any opportunity to kill this war caller actually is pretty good. It is an ally. That's a good one. Is he going to give me the opportunity, though, to kill the war caller? Because that is really what matters here. He's going to attack for eight. Nope, twelve.
So he could easily be holding a what is it, the one white that uh, allows you to eliminate damage and get plus two plus two. But I have to block. I can't take 12. Or I'm just dead next turn. Although I'm dead just anyway. So if he can protect it, I have to gate and keep my creature. That's that's what we were hoping for. So gaining life sounds good. Uh, I definitely need to keep the sure strike up. Depends on what his card is. I mean, I clearly I have to jump block, um, but it depends on what he attacks with. And if he does not get, um, if he does not put another ally into play, if he puts an ally into play, I'm just dead. Uh, yeah, I'm not in a position to attack. I feel like we got a good start. Maybe I made a mistake by um, using the Stonewalker early. Oh, he has an ally. Ah, that card is good. Yeah, so I'm just dead. I don't have enough blockers, so... That is the game. So what do we do against this big green deck? Um, so is it in my best interest to put some big stuff at the top end? I mean, I never did draw either one of my vampires. Uh, Rolling Thunder would have probably won me the game. Mm -hmm. Do I want the Winnower? Do I want the Devastator? Do I want to play some Scours? I think if I win, I have to win early. I don't think that I have a chance late game. So I'm going to run it back. Yeah, I mean, it needs a red mana, but... I've got a two 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 drops and a three drop, so oops. Can easily attack into Blister Pod, which is nice. So if I exile the Blister Pod, he doesn't get anything off of it. I don't know if it's worth it. Um, or I just play the familiar. I can still use the complete disregard later. Um, it's an instant. I can attack into it. See if he wants to double block.
I'll accept that. Messes up his ramp. And we got our red. So yeah, we'll go ahead and attack in. Happy to trade there. He's probably happy to trade here. Uh, but next turn we play the Zulaport Cutthroat. If we draw a land, we do that, and the Nettle Drone. Uh, so, do I care about a trick? I think he may just want to get the Death Toucher off the board. I think that card could be quite good against this guy. Uh, we don't draw land though, which is a bummer. So we probably just want the nettle drone, since it can kill that thing. Most of his creatures are hit by the Rising Miasma, um, but so are mine. <laughs> so um, It's possible to landfall to keep some of them alive. Yeah, that card's a problem. Yeah, I'm fine with that trade. Since it's one of the things that I can't hit. much my I mean if I have to use the rising miasma without awaken I mean I will I just would much rather use awaken and now we're only two mana away so it's not that far what is this whenever so it gives you green plant tokens. So that is a card I can play. Stay back. We have a game plan, we just can't let him get too far out ahead of us before we use it. Uh, I'd love to use it post combat after he blocks and take out at least something bigger. That's a good one to take out, too, though. close to time to take care of some of this stuff. I think he's waiting for a, an, a, some ability to um, pump this stuff before he does anything. So we hit six. 
interesting to see what he does to block. I mean, he put all four of his tokens in front of it. We're one mana away. But if I use this this turn, only one of his things survives. I'll have to play another land in order to use the Rising Miasma with Awaken anyway, so it's not a big deal that I uh, didn't use this one. I am going to be taking some damage this turn. I want him to use up some of his white mana, that's where all his combat tricks are. But our opponent's almost out of cards, which is excellent. Coming in with the team. So 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Jeez. I think 18 is the most he can possibly do. I guess I do want to prevent some of this damage. Um, so I guess I do that. If I don't draw land, I, I may just be using the Rising Miasma anyway. So it doesn't give him trample. I wonder if that's how he's hoping to, to beat me this turn. And it's fine. Hopefully he creates another core ally. Hmm. So our opponent will have a 3-3 left. Ah, I really wish I'd gotten land there. Again, a life, which is nice. Opponent gets a core ally. And a plant. <laughs> I 
we're one mana short. This has been a tough game. We really need... I don't know, maybe I should have played 18 lands. That, I don't know, I kind of hate to do it in a land, or in a deck that tops out at, what, 7? Lands build his team by two, so any land really can beat us. So he essentially just needs to do this, and eventually he'll beat me. It's a four turn clock. Unfortunately, we have to attack. And we take three this turn. Ugh. We had him. Almost had him, anyway. Uh, maybe we didn't quite have him, but we were close. This turn we take two. This guy's so lucky, he just... Oh, I'm sorry, we take three. This guy just keeps drawing lands every single turn. I mean, he's like, never misses. I mean, there's nothing we can do here. Uh, we're just dead on board, so. Concede game. Thanks for watching. This has been Doug with Basin Level Magic. 